Welcome to UTC AI Studio, AI-powered, creativity-fueled. Let's be honest, you've probably talked to it. Maybe you've asked it to write a silly poem or help you out with your homework. But have you ever actually stopped and wondered what's going on inside ChatGPT's brain when it spits out those crazy human-like answers? Well, today we're going to pull back the curtain. But how does it do that? How does an AI write a story or whip up an image or just talk like a person? You type something in and then you see it, right? It responds word by word, almost like it's thinking. But what is really happening inside that black box? How does a machine create something that feels so human? And how does an AI seem to just understand you? You know, it really does feel like magic sometimes, doesn't it? But it's not. The entire AI revolution that we're living through right now, it all boils down to one single, incredibly powerful idea that first showed up back in 2017. A team of researchers came up with a totally new way of looking at the problem. It all revolved around one single powerful concept. It all started with this paper with maybe the best title in computer science history. Attention is all you need which introduced the term transformers. Later in 2018, Google released BERT, which revolutionized search with bi-directional context, and 2020 OpenAI came up with GPT-3, a powerful generative model that revolutionized the world. And the name pretty much gives the game away. GPT, it stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer. Okay, so generative, that's easy. It generates stuff, creates new things such as images, videos, or content, pre-trained also makes sense. It's been trained on a truly insane amount of data. But that last word, transformer, that's the key. That's the secret sauce. So what exactly is this thing called a transformer? It's not just some other fancy neural network. This was a completely new architecture that changed the game for AI. Before transformers, older models like RNNS could only read text one word at a time, left to right, like us. They struggle to keep track of context, especially in long sentences. But the transformer cracked that problem wide open with a revolutionary idea called self-attention. This mechanism allows the AI to look at an entire sentence at once and figure out for itself which words are the most important and related for understanding other words in that sentence. It literally learns where it should focus its attention. Let's make this real. Look at this sentence. Now, the word sentence could mean a couple of different things, right? Is it like a string of words with a period at the end or is it legal punishment? How on earth does an AI know the difference? Well, this is where that attention mechanism comes in. The model learns that to figure out the meaning of sentence, it needs to pay extra attention to the words judge and issued. Those are the magic context clues. It figures out judges issue legal sentences, not a lawyer. So here's the key takeaway. Attention lets the model dynamically decide how important other words are. It's not just reading from left to right anymore, it's building this incredible complex web of relationships between all the words to figure out what they really mean in that specific context. That single innovation, attention, is what allows AI to understand relationships and meaning, not just text. The transformer architecture has two main parts, the encoder and the decoder. The encoder reads and understands the input. For example, your prompt, the decoder then uses that understanding to generate a meaningful response. In ChatGPT and similar models, both sides are deeply intertwined. The encoder absorbs meaning and the decoder predicts the next word. That's how it learns to turn understanding into creation. Originally, the transformer setup was built for translation, turning one language into another. But it turns out that this same structure works astonishingly well for everything. Writing, coding, AI image generation, summarizing books, generating video, speech recognition, and even predicting things like stock market trends. That same core idea of attention works for all of it. It's just incredible. But wait a second, how does that even work? An image isn't a sentence, right? So how can a transformer process it? Well, the solution is just brilliant. A vision transformer first chops up an image into a bunch of little patches like a grid. Then it treats each one of those little patches as if it were a word. It turns it into a vector. After that, it just feeds this new sentence of image patches into the same self-attention mechanism we've been talking about. This lets the model learn how all the different parts of the image relate to each other. You know, how a cat's ear connects to its head and its tail to understand the whole picture. So how does the magic trick, predicting the next word, works? For all its incredible power, the fundamental job of a model like ChatGPT is shockingly simple. And this might sound crazy. It's basically a supercharged version of the autocomplete on your phone. Seriously, it's all about one thing, 
predicting the next word. Here's how it works. You give it a prompt, your starting text. The model looks at that and predicts the most likely next word. It adds that word, then repeat it again. That word by word generation you see on your screen, that's literally the loop in action. Early models that tried this produced gibberish. But when researchers scaled up the data and parameters, suddenly coherence appeared. The same loop started producing stories, poetry, reasoning, even creativity. That's the power of scale. So if the code trick is just predicting the next word, the real question is how? How does it make that prediction so incredibly well? Let's pop the hood and follow the data on its journey from the moment you hit enter to the model's final response. Let's follow the data from the moment you hit enter. First, tokenization. Your text is broken into small chunks called tokens. Second, embedding. Each token is converted into a long list of numbers representing meaning. Now here's where positional encoding comes in. Because transformers look at all words at once, they don't naturally know the order of words. So positional encoding gives each word a kind of timestamp. It tells the AI that man bites dog is different from dog bites man. Without sequence, the whole structure of the sentence falls apart. All those sequences of vectors then passes through an operation that's known as attention block. And this allows the vectors to talk to each other and pass information back and forth to update their values. For example, the meaning of the word model in the phrase a machine learning model is different from its meaning in the phrase a fashion model. The attention block is what's responsible for figuring out which words in context are relevant to updating the meanings of which other words and how exactly those meanings should be updated. And again, whenever we use the word meaning, this is somehow entirely encoded in the entries of those vectors. After that, these vectors pass through a different kind of operation. And depending on the source that you're reading, this will be referred to as a multi-layer perceptron or maybe a feed-forward layer. And here the vectors don't talk to each other, they all go through the same operation in parallel. Each layer builds a deeper understanding of meaning and relationships, like layers of reasoning stacking up. Finally, the model uses all that to predict the next token. And the scale of this system is mind-blowing. GPT-3, for example, has about 175 billion parameters little tuning knobs that collectively define what the model knows and how it responds. One of the most elegant ideas in all of AI is word embedding. Imagine a gigantic multi-dimensional library where every word sits on a shelf next to other words that share meaning. That's what embedding is, it's math for meaning. If you take the vector for king, subtract man and then add woman, you end up astonishingly close to queen the model has learned concepts, relationships, analogies, even emotions just by reading text. It's not memorizing words. It's learning the geometry of ideas. After processing all those numbers, the model generates a score for every word it knows. A mathematical function called softmax converts those scores into neat probabilities that all add up to 100%. Then it picks one and the next word. But here's the fun part. It doesn't always pick the highest one. There's a creativity dial called temperature. Low temperature means predictable, factual, safe answers. Balanced temperature means more creative, surprising, sometimes weird responses. Too high, it goes off the rails and at times just spills out nonsense. That's literally how you control whether your AI sounds like a scientist, or a poet, or who is totally nuts. Even though we think of them as text tools, transformers are everywhere now. They power DAL-E and Midjourney for image generation, Whisper for speech recognition, Gemini and Claude for reasoning and writing, and even AlphaFold, which revolutionized biology by predicting protein structures. This single architecture, transformer, has become the backbone of the modern AI era. What's the real magic here? It's not magic at all. What feels like creativity or intelligence is really the emergent result of simple mathematical patterns scaled to unimaginable size. It's all about understanding the relationships between words, turning them into numbers and then predicting what comes next. But that simplicity is its beauty. Because from that single humble rule, predict words, emerges everything we now call intelligence. And that leaves us with a final question. If a machine can write poetry, explain physics, and hold a conversation, all by predicting the next word, what does that say about us? What will we ask it to understand next? 
So, what would you ask AI to learn next? Drop your idea in the comments. Best one gets pinned. That's something worth thinking about. Thanks for watching UTCI Studio, AI powered, creativity fueled. I'll see you in the next video where we will cover what is natural language processing. Till then, as always, keep learning, keep building, and keep creating with AI.